After almost four weeks of searching, there are two potential leads tonight in the search for the missing Malaysia Airlines flight. ABC's Clayton Sandell is in Perth, Australia, where crews are working two separate angles. He shattered Ludlow's early morning calm with three gunshots, critically injuring a teenager. Tonight, the manhunt continues for the suspect who spoiled a party on the Ohio River for hundreds of others. Not on your side, reporter Tom McKee is live tonight in Ludlow with new information on the shooting. Tom? Right now, we are counting the hours down until the city celebrates the first day of baseball. The Queen City is king of opening day. So is Channel 9. Nine on Your Side is covering every angle of opening day from Great American Ballpark to the parade to parking tomorrow. Amy Wattis is live at the ballpark now with what's new this year. Amy? Thanks. Well, Reds pitchers are oldest Chapman and Matt Latos will ride in tomorrow's Findlay Market Parade. This year's Grand Marshal is former Reds great Dave Concepcion. Now keep in mind the parade route has changed a bit this year. It's going to start at Finley Market on Race Street as it always does. But instead of going straight down Race, it's going to take a right on Liberty and then a left on Elm down to Central Parkway. It will then go back to Race and proceed to Fifth. So keep that in mind tomorrow. This is a live look now at Fort Washington Way where all is quiet tonight. But tomorrow you can expect plenty of traffic for the game. Finding a place to park on opening day can be a real headache if you're not prepared. Not on your side, traffic reporter Adam Marshall is on your side with the do's and don'ts. And on that note, in New York City today, an extraordinary show of solidarity for a fallen policeman. Some 25,000 officers from around the country packed shoulder to shoulder to pay final respects to Officer Rafael Ramos and to send a message of unity at a time when criticism of law enforcement is growing louder. Thanks, Amy. A 16 year old girl is back home tonight after going missing more than a week ago. Police say Fort Thomas teen Eden Palmer came home in the middle of the night. Police told Nine on Your Side last week they believed the girl ran away. The family hasn't said where she was. A year ago today, Bardstown police officer and Cincinnati native Jason Ellis was ambushed and murdered. His killer is still on the loose. Kentucky State Police say they've received hundreds of tips and have conducted hundreds of interviews. But all that work has produced no suspects. Detectives continue to work on the case, but some are worried that the investigation is running out of leads. Closure um, helps, never heals, but it helps. And, and you know, this, this case, we can't even get that right now. Ellis was immortalized last week on the Kentucky Law Enforcement Memorial in Richmond. His wife Amy was given a flag. Go to WCPO.com and you can get a minute by minute account of the moments after Ellis was found dead and more about who the killer might be. That's on WCPO.com. Before you hand your money over to a parking lot attendant, make sure the person taking the cash actually works there. Police say earlier today a man was pretending to be an attendant at a lot on 9th and Walnut Streets. That's the ABM parking lot. Police arrested the man for taking people's money. Now this happens more than you might think. Investigators say they will often set up stings to catch people doing this very thing near parking lots and parking garages. It was a busy night for police responding to a series of shootings. First, in Cincinnati, officers were first called to an apartment on Redding Road in Avondale this morning around 145. They did find a considerable amount of blood in a hallway, but they say they didn't find a suspect or a victim. But a suspect is in custody after a shooting in Covington. Police heard shots fired in the area of 10th and Madison around 2.30 this morning. They later found a man shot in the leg. He was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Officers are still interviewing witnesses to piece everything together. And firefighters are trying to figure out what started a fire at a house in Green Township. That fire started in the attic of a home on Race Road just after midnight. The house is vacant. Damage was contained to the attic and second floor. Race Road was closed in the area while crews battled the fire. No one was hurt. Well, for most of you out there, it's a three day weekend, so we're about halfway through. First half, probably an A plus for many of us. But uh, what about the second half? Sherry Hughes is here to tell us. Well, I think we're going to be doing pretty good, but we are going to perhaps see a shower or two as we get into Memorial Day 